For the longest time now, I've wondered why gaming on Android hasn't taken off in a bigger way. While there are lots of good games on Android, the Play Store caters by far more towards the casual audience. And when I sit down for a proper gaming session, even I find myself reaching for the Nintendo Switch or my GPD Win 2. It's not the power, the best-selling game on the Switch is Fortnite, and that runs just fine on Android, as we all know. It's not development, making games for Android is really easy. In fact, I showed you how to do that once in just seven minutes using Unity. It could be the battery, but then again, that doesn't explain why people don't play more Android in their living rooms or using a power bank. So maybe it's buttons. And if that's the case, then the Nubia Red Magic Mars might just have the solution. But let's rewind for a moment. The Nubia Red Magic Mars is an Android phone sporting a Snapdragon 845 chipset, along with six gigabytes of RAM at the base model, or all the way up to 10 if you want to go full spec. The version I'm using has got 8GB. And storage is also very generous, you can get 64GB, 128 or 256 For those keeping track, that's the same chipset that's found in the Note 9, the ASUS ROG phone, the Razer 2, lots of far more expensive devices. This one comes in at $399 for the starting price. It also puts this way ahead of the similarly priced Honor Play with its Kirin 970 processor, in terms of price to specs ratio then, the closest competition comes from the extremely good value Pocophone F1. And in fact, this one performed even better than that when it comes to benchmark scores. You have dual heat pipe cooling and convection cooling, both of which seem to do a really good job. And when running some rather demanding apps, I didn't notice it get warm at all, so that was very impressive. It is worth noting at this point that the Snapdragon 845 is a 2018 processor, and we can expect the 850 to find its way into the likes of the Samsung S10 and also lots more gaming phones presumably in the year ahead. That said, there haven't even been any game phones announced with the 850 on the horizon, so for now this is still the best performance you're going to get, and especially at this price. In terms of design, the Red Magic Mars is very much a gaming phone through and through, with lots of random lines all over the place, RGB lighting and Aurora band they call it, and a kind of point on the back which annoyingly means you can't lie it flat on the table. If you're into the gamer aesthetic, then you'll like it. If you're not, then it might be a bit much to swallow. This is definitely a case of form over function. Also, it does have dual speakers. When I say dual speakers, it's dual in the same sense as the Note 9. That means that you're using the earpiece and the small speaker down the bottom. It's not quite as impressive as the Razer 2, but it's still a big sound and it's very decent for the price. Then there's the 4D rumble engine, but unfortunately for now, that's only supported by PUBG and maybe a handful of other games. And yeah, it has shoulder buttons, or at least shoulder touch capacitive patches. They're not actually clicky buttons, they're just touch sensitive areas. I'll get more into those in a moment. Enough jibber jabber, what is this thing actually like to game with? Well, performance wise, I am very happy to report that this is up there with the very best. It'll play anything that the Play Store has to offer on the higher settings with minimal frame drops. It competes with the likes of the Razer 2, the Note 9, far more expensive devices. This is due, of course, to the impressive specs, the great cooling, and if you went for the 10 gigabytes of RAM model, I'm sure it'd be even better. But I was most impressed of all with the emulation performance. I was able to play Metroid Prime at a playable frame rate without doing any performance tweaks. Oh, and also Sonic Heroes. This is the best GameCube emulation experience I've had on an Android phone. I even used the GPU segment of Gary's Speedtest G and pitted it against the Razer 2 and the Note 9. These are two phones I have lying around, which is why I keep comparing it to those. And it actually performed better than those devices in terms of its frame rate. Sure, the screen doesn't show off these games in the very best light. It's only 1080p, only an IPS LCD display, but most people aren't gonna notice. It's comparable to the Poco Phone F1 and it's better, of course, than the Switch, which has a 720p display. In fact, that slightly lower resolution should mean that the battery life lasts a bit longer whilst you're gaming. And something that every gaming phone needs, this device does have a very impressive battery life thanks to a 3,800 milliamp hour battery. As for those shoulder buttons, well, yeah, they're definitely a thing. So these shoulder buttons might be a good idea in theory, but in practice, they maybe leave a little bit to be desired. As I mentioned, they're not actually triggers or buttons despite being called Mars triggers. They're capacitive touch sensors. This means that they sit flush to the device they're very difficult to find, so you'll find yourself often missing them when you're trying to press them, which of course means that you get killed in whatever game you're playing. At the same time, there's a big lack of support. Most games aren't gonna support shoulder buttons. The time they do come in a bit handy is in emulation. I did manage to map a couple of emulators so that the shoulder buttons would be the triggers on the control pad. However, not even every emulator is gonna support this because some will 
force you to choose between a controller or touchscreen control. So yeah, you can definitely put these in the gimmick camp. And that might be a bit of a shame, but it's a good thing that the phone performs so well in terms of pure specs and speed and power that it doesn't really matter. What I found myself actually liking a bit more is the switch at the top left. You flick that and then you enter a game launcher where you can pick your games from a scroll wheel. And you can also access all sorts of gamer-centric features like blocking notifications or overclocking the CPU to get a bit more performance out of the device. And yeah, it just made me a bit more inclined to get gaming. And with performance this good, being able to play Sonic Heroes and be able to jump into the games like that, I actually found myself playing more Android games than I have done for a while and really enjoying it. So that's definitely a win for this device as a gaming phone. And yeah, the good news is that it's actually also a really good phone in general, even if you're not into gaming. As I've already hinted, it actually gives the Poco Phone F1 a bit of a run for its money in terms of value. A bit more expensive at $399, but you get some more features like the lighting, like the cooling, and you get a more stock vanilla Android experience. And in terms of the camera, it's nothing exciting to write home about. You get one 16 megapixel shooter on the back with an f1.8 aperture. Around the front, you get an eight megapixel shooter. The big surprise though is they actually perform pretty well, certainly better than they have any right to. They're not amazing, don't get me wrong, but there seems to be some post-processing, it adds some saturation to make photos nice and punchy. The dynamic range and the exposure seems to work really well, better than say the Doogee S90 that I reviewed last. You can't do any bokeh effects because there's only that one lens and it doesn't have any AI trickery, but the aperture is wide enough that you can get some natural depth effects anyways. In general, it's not gonna blow you away and it's not as good as the Poco Phone F1 in this case, but it is a really decent camera considering everything else you're getting for that price. So yeah, in conclusion, this is not only a great gaming phone, actually one of the best, especially given the price, but it's also a really good value for money phone for anyone. If you love gaming on Android, if you love PUBG, if you wanna try some emulation in your pocket, then you're gonna really like this phone, especially if you can't afford something like the Razer Phone 2 or the ROG phone. On the other hand, if you're a general user who wants just good value for money and great performance, then this is a contender as well. The only question then is whether you'll be able to live with that somewhat garish gamer aesthetic. So there you go, that's the Nubia Red Magic Mars. One to watch, I think. I hope you found this video useful and interesting. If you did, then please leave a like, please share it around. That helps us out immensely. Head over to androidauthority.com if you want to read the full review. The link will be in the description down below. And whilst you're there, why not take a look around? For we are your source for all things Android.